So today we're going to talk a little bit about the techniques I use daily for the project I work right now. But uh, before a little bit about me, I started my career like uh, 22 years ago, more or less, in TV production. Then I decided to move for games. And I had the, the luck to work for big companies like Gameloft, Samsung, Sony, uh, Glue Mobile, and then I moved to Poland to work for TSG. And after other projects, now I work in this project called Wings of Heroes, and I'm quite new in the team, like three or four months. And now I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for the new airplanes and that kind of asset I'm talking about. And some renders that I do to present my asset to my, my art lead. And yeah, so uh, my, my challenge in this project is that I don't have much time, the, my, the time that I would like to have. So I had to learn some tricks to achieve high quality, to do it faster. So basically, uh, I will talk a little bit about my process. Basically, I would have a concept that I, I'm going to show you later. And then I start my Apoly, which is a very mesh dance. And then from that, I could, uh, can build the game ready asset and then bake the texture, normal map, that kind of thing. And yeah, that would be my ideal world when I would receive, like, as you can see, a concept, and then I would deliver a, a ready asset. But yeah, as I said, I don't have time for high poly, unfortunately, so I, ha I have to do like the, the game ready asset and start from it. So, how does this start for me? So the, the smart people, the game designers, and the business people decide the airplane that they want to put in the game. So they, they send me this list, the model that they want. And then I start doing my research and then my modeling. And I always keep in mind these things, like collecting the reference, like good ones, organize it, use the right uh, technique, and spend wisely the polygons, respect the technical poly count. And when I talk about the collecting reference, I, I'm talking about that because uh, I don't have a concept, so I need to go through the internet like uh, Pinterest and start uh, digging for, for the, these technical drawings, Im image, photos, to understand how the airplane uh, works. And sometimes miniatures help me a lot. And, but my, my, big, bigger, uh, my bigger, uh, my bigger, my better reference is always this technical drawing. And in the beginning it was very challenging for me because when I see this kind of drawings, I don't like it, it's very technical. And there is some, uh, in the beginning something that uh, I, I don't understand. So it took me some time to understand how to use it properly because yes, it's, it's uh, blueprints. Uh, okay, so just put in the 3D viewport and start model, but it's not that way because it's a very technical drawing. You need to align it properly. You need to understand how the shape works. So I had to learn in the hard, hardest way which one was, would be the best for me. So what I mean by that is this kind of um, uh, drawings, like shapes, that I can find some kind of blueprints because they help me to understand how the, the shape of the, the, the airplane uh, were built. So when I learned that, I always look for this kind of blueprint. It's the best reference for me. And as you can see from that, I can build like the proper shape. Seems basic, basic but if you do it wrong, like someone that, uh, unfortunately, my art lead knows a lot about airplane and he can smell when something's wrong. So like this wing is, is, looks strange. So then I can achieve like very fast this kind of modeling using this kind of technique. Just drawing, uh, just drawing these shapes and then organizing, align it like you can see there, like W1, W1, W2, W2, and then I get like a uh, perfect align. And yeah, with that technique, I, I make sure that everything is correct. And if he says something, I'm sure that I'm doing the right thing. And this is another good example where I can find this kind of shapes, explain to me how the, the body is, so I can build it properly. In like an example of a ready model using this technique. It's a very simple technique, but you can achieve a very good uh, result in the end. And yeah, and before doing this, uh, I have these three techniques that I use the most. And I'm gonna talk about uh, very quickly. 
because with this kind of technique that uh, is the the sculpting in Retopo that I don't bother about topology, mesh density, that kind of thing, because I'm only aiming to the final result. So I can use like Boolean projection, Boolean operations, and get the final result very quickly. And this other one that uh, a lot of like, when I talk to junior artists, medium artists is for me, it's kind of strange that they don't not use this kind of uh, very old technique, CAD modeling or NURBIS, or ever, or ever they, they name it. And um, yeah, can you can you can you play it, please? In, in this video, I show you uh, how does this work. I like this kind of uh, technique because it, it, it seems technical, but it's kind of live mesh because the mesh is, has this history inside. So if you do like a operation like cut, he knows that you cut it from a cylinder. So you can move this cut whenever you want, and he will like uh, uh, recalculate the mesh. So it's kind of live mesh. So I can rotate face, and he calculate like unions, intersection, and stuff. It's like the modeling is always alive. I can change it very easily and export it and going back. You can see I can do whatever I want with the operations that I did before. And there is, of course, like a very expensive software, but these ones are free ones, a very good one. Like uh, you can say that could be a competitor for Fusion 360. Uh, can, can you put to the next slide, please? Thank you. And yeah, but the technique I use the most is the old classic poly by poly because I can combine all this technique, even the one that I showed you before. I can start something that's like a, maybe a trick piece from the airplane and then start from it doing like a topology and stuff. And yeah, and then I like I check the silhouette and everything and I see that everything is okay. I respect, uh, as I showed before, I had to respect this poly count. So we do like 10K, 50K, 50K for, for each airplane. So this one is less than 10K. Yeah, as I said, 10, 10 between 50, 15K, my map resolution, uh, 2K maps. Unfortunately, no D for this kind of model. Yeah, I want to show you, like, go like a, a little bit step by step, show you like how I did this piece. So, so as I said, my reference, so I just uh, put in green the ones that I decided to be like uh, separate pieces because you'd be animated or be like removed somehow for some reason, or breakable piece, like, like this example, you can see these pieces that are moving are the pieces that I, I selected in the blueprint. It, to achieve this kind of uh, shape, like these holes, these details, I use the technique that I mentioned, like I build these shapes and I use these shapes to cut the mesh and achieve the result. If you don't know what I mean by Boolean operations, it's something like that. I have the shapes, and I cut the mesh to achieve the, the final, final form that I want. So it's live, I can, I can move stuff, and then I have the final result of some cleanup. This is the final piece for the wing. And if you don't know what I mean about cleanup, is, is, is that like uh, the Boolean operation does some kind of mess create unnecessary vertex, sometimes unnecessary face. So I just remove it because I need a clean mesh in the end. It's basically, basically just doing this, like uh, decide which one, which edges would be like hard, hard or soften. Yeah, final model, and then I need to do texture, but before UV with a boring process, but it's necessary. And of course, with UV, I mean, there I'm showing the entire uh, aircraft. I always consider the player perspective because 
as you can see these uh, screenshots, the player will be mostly this, this perspective from the airplane. Of course, you can see in the store in the hangar, like a turnaround and stuff, but in the game, that's what matters. So I give more space to these areas, which means more resolution. And then before proceeding to text tray, I have to convince my art lead that everything is okay. So I send him because he's, he's working remotely and I send him this picture so he can see the, poly, the, the topology, the poly count and see if everything is okay, silhouette. And I always do this kind of rendering. I know that in the end it won't be like a render, but with this kind of turntable, he can see all the shape. You see that everything is working fine. This is another example for our other model. This one is one that I'm working right now. It's not, it's not fully ready. And yeah, if it, everything goes smooth, so I can proceed to the texture, which is the part I, I enjoy the most, because it's a low poly, you know, so I need to put as much as I can do in the, in the texture to make the airplane like looks nice. So I use this, these techniques that uh, I, I always, sometimes I like to do everything inside Blender because it's a free software. I started using Blender like in 2000, 2003, 2004, more or less. And it's, it's good that today you can do everything inside Blender. So I use this technique because we don't have like, a, as I said, a high poly. So how can I give to my model this smoothness in the end, in the real time engine? So I use this technique, just the simple node. I bake it to the normal map. So I have these softened edges, like free and, and fast. No, no high poly needed. Okay, can you play it, please? And but but more details in real time. Uh, so this technique that uh, some some people call like playing substance inside Blender, when you can like combine the the baked one that I did before that I showed you to smooth the edges, and adding these details like this height map in real time painting, and combining with the normal map. I'm using this kind of uh, line brush so I can mimic these, these metallic details that the aircraft has. And it's cool because, because it works just like Substance Painter, but it's free. As you can see, I'm like building in real time this, this black and white map. And what, what uh, I, I will do later, uh, can you move forward please? No, I mean, next slide please, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, so when I finish this height map, as I said, like very, very easy with this very simple composition, I combine everything together. And okay, after a lot of work, that's the kind of black or white map that I have, can be like inverted or not, doesn't matter in the end. And then I mix everything together. And in the end, I bake this uh, final normal map in Blender. And then I will have everything, all the details that I need for this, for this mesh. And something that I like to do to get, get rid of this very perfect lines effect is combining these, uh, these noise effects like this. Very simple node distortion composition, you can see there. And I have a full control of how much distortion I want in this line. Because I think in the end it's a very good result. I mean, less very perfect lines. And yeah, a quick, a quick preview of, uh, with the, this map read. I have all the details I need. So I can start put some colors and stuff and, and solve other maps like roughness, metallic. 
I have more screenshots. And of course, I use the blueprint to see what kind of line is. I mean, I'm not doing this because I like, oh, I like this line. No, I have to, to follow the blueprint because in the end, my art lead will, so I, I believe he's checking. So I have to do it. And as you can see, it works perfect fine, like Substance and quick so. Another example of a bigger airplane, that one gave him a lot of work. The one I'm working right now. And yeah, after that, I can go start put some colors and do metallic and stuff, but it's basically the same stuff. But uh, for color and talking about substance painter techniques, I use this add-on with kind of same, kind of the same, like I have these smart materials, but inside Blender, which I can like mix them together. Like, as you can see, I have like a basic metal and like a paint, paint on top. And to mix, to mix them properly, properly, can you play it, please? Thank you. I just, just like the, the heightness technique, I can just paint this mask that is, is mixing, is blending these two materials so I can decide whether I want the paint or not, or, or, or the opposite. And for me, the advantage to do that, everything inside brand is that if I see some issue like, oh, there is like overlap in the UV that I haven't noticed before, I can just solve inside Blender. I don't have to go back to my 3D software and then export again to Substance and update and reproject all the purchase and all the textures and rebake everything. I just do here and it's, it's quick, quicker. As you can see uh, there, there is this black and white dots. Uh, uh, that's white dots is the, the areas that I painted is in mixing the materials. Oh, it's, it's not the... Uh... Ah, okay, cool. And to make the, your brush more like natural, organic or, or something, I use this old uh, custom brush from uh, a very old uh, Blender version, but they're still working the nowadays version. So it's very cool because as you can see, you can have better uh, brushes, more organic, so nothing so, so, so perfect. And yeah, you combine these techniques, you can see smart materials, I can uh, easily change the paint color, I can like do stencils to add these cool uh, details that they put in the airplane, stars, sometimes the model name, sometimes, I don't know, uh, pinups or this kind of thing. And everything together, we have this, this kind of, this kind of uh, result. And yeah, and after that, I mean, I like to enjoy it, like to make it like, okay, let's see, because when I render, I really pay attention in the final result. So I do some renders. I like to use this uh, true sky engine inside Blender because there is this very nice skies, uh, clouds, and I can test if, if everything is working fine. And you can say, oh, but it's not for a render or for cinematic or something, but in the end, you can use this image for uh, offers, uh, load the screen and stuff in that way, of course, I can show off a little, a little bit of my work to my boss. And yeah, that, that, that's all for me. I mean, I use these techniques daily. For now, I'm doing. I'm going to the my, my my airplane number four. And yeah, that's it. If you guys want to make some questions, I'll be very happy to answer. How long it takes to find a good day? Uh, sometimes in a bad day, one day. Yeah. Sometimes one day, only looking for a reference because. Um, some people or micromanager boss can say, oh, you can't spend one day just looking for reference, but sometimes the bad reference can make you work like, 
because sometimes uh, uh, happened once when I was looking for a reference and someone posted this blueprint saying that was from this model when I check in, uh, just a little bit more wasn't the proper one. So it's good to, to spend at, uh, at least half day, I would say, because it's going to be good for you. No more questions? Oh, there is someone there. Uh, depends on the model because there is bigger airplanes that it has more details, but uh, more or less between eight and ten days. For modeling, three or four days. There is so someone in the back. Okay. What is it? And is it free? Yeah, it's free. I'm always looking for free solutions. I can I can give you the name after this, the presentation. Oh, uh, there is someone here. Oh, oh, no, I think I'm seeing still. Okay, I'll be in TSCG booth. If someone wants to ask me some questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you very much.